Previously on Trevor Restores a Diecast Car, I professed my love for aviation and restored one Matchbox uh, Skybuster airplane. So this month for the Diecast modeling community on Facebook, the DMC challenge of the month is to uh, build any plastic model kit. So I decided to build a MiG-25, which is one of my favorite airplanes for a few reasons. It is uh, one of the fastest airplanes that has ever been in production and um it's it's just wicked cool and i, I live in america so it's a very strange and uh kind of mythological aircraft uh, that we're gonna go ahead and build up today the russians built this um and, and and flew these in the 70s and in the early 1980s to uh try to intercept and combat or not combat's the wrong word come on i'm being too aggressive here try to uh um make the americans not want to fly the sr-71 blackbird uh which is another one of the fastest airplanes ever built um which was built for reconnaissance this one here was built to be um also be kind of a fighter if it needed to be um these airplanes are, are, are ridiculously fast it could go over mach 3 if it needed to um, but of course it would kind of damage the airframe. So here's, here's the kit. I started putting it together, uh, as soon as I found out about the challenge and it kind of has these crazy shoddy directions cause it's, uh, kind of a bootleg model kit that I got on eBay. Um, and, uh, you know, I decided to put it together. So the real airplane's made out of stainless steel and it's, you know, it's a quick little guy. Actually, it's really big. It's a quick, really big guy. Uh, when I was a kid and, you know, MiGs were kind of in different movies like Iron Eagle and, um, I don't know, Top Gun and stuff, they, they weren't really MiGs, they were other airplanes um, that were kind of mocked up to, I guess, be kind of MiGs. I thought that this airplane looked like the F-15 when I was a kid. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I grew up and, you know, realized that it has nothing to do with the F-15. So I had it most of the way put together before I decided that maybe I should document it. Um, put a little hook on it so I could hang it. I'm uh, trying to get the center of gravity right. Uh, so here we are. Um, once I decided that maybe I should be documenting this, gluing the two more of the, there's six tail fins that had to be glued in at different angles, and it, <laughs> it was difficult to do, I got to tell you. Um, mainly because, again, it's it's not the best kit ever uh, made available. So it was, you know, uh, it went together okay, but the fit and the finish wasn't, wasn't you know, perfect. Um my Koyan Gurevich is the Russian um, or Soviet company that would have designed this thing um, back in the day. And, oh, here I am filling in uh, a tube that was supposed to go in there. I think it's like a refueling nozzle or something, and it was just ridiculously out of scale with the rest of the airplane. So I decided to just fill in the hole with Tamiya putty. Um, NATO calls this thing or called it back in the day the fox bat, although I don't know that that's, that has anything to do with the actual um, Russian name for the airplane. Um, I think this is just a, a huge, awesome, ridiculous, bombastic feat of aerospace engineering um, to, to build an airplane out of stainless steel and make it so that it, you know, it, I guess it was meant to go around Mach 2.8 or something like that, but it could go past Mach 3 to sort of intercept and keep up for very, very short times with the SR-71. Um, I don't know how much success, you know, Russia had in, in chasing down the SR-71. Um, and again, I don't know that we, we did a lot of flight with the SR-71 in the first place because there were, I think there was only like 30 SR-71s built and there was like a thousand of these things built or more. Um, so again, this is like like a mass-produced aircraft, which again is, is one thing that I think is so spectacular about it because, um, you know, they built over a thousand of them, you know, compared to other, you know, ridiculously fast sort of experimental aircraft or whatever. Uh, you know, they, they, they kind of only build a handful of them. So, you know, these things are, are really cool for that reason. So here it is completely assembled other than the canopy or the glass. And I'm painting it uh, with Tamiya aluminum, which is kind of a, a silver color. Um, the, the, the pictures that I find of this thing, um, they're either kind of a gray color or, you know, bordering on a silver color. So 
Uh, here it is after I painted it silver. I am going to um, do some weathering to it with a wash, and I am going to uh, del coat it. Here I did a little bit of black um, detailing in on the on the turbo fans or whatever they're called, the, the jet exhaust output, and um, certain parts of the uh, tail fins that you know I noticed in pictures were black, and the nose cone and part of the surround of the cockpit is is black. Um, so I kind of tried my best on that. Here's my first go through with a little bit of weathering wash. I was holding it by the nose cone with my fingers so that that's not all the way in. I put the then I put the canopy in and did a little more weathering on it, a little more wash on it. Here it is before that. Um, but you know airplanes get dirty, right? They fly them in, in rain and they fly them in all weather and they park them in the desert sometimes and um, so they're just not going to be you know clean all the time. I imagine the military cleans their airplanes, you know, but you know, for it to be just expected to be clean all the time. Here it is, you know, most of the way done. It's not clear coated yet, um, but with the canopy in place. So we started off with uh, just a plastic kit, um, you know, with kind of crappy directions. I got it, you know, together and, um, you know, I like it. Uh, I was able to get it to fit right. Here's the real thing, kind of, I guess that's landing if the tires are smoking like that. And here it is sitting on the ground, you know, kind of dirty, right? Kind of dirty. But, a, you know, a, a mean-looking thing, right? Here it is in the sky. I think this is a training model. You can see the little window in the back. But, you know, they're, they're a formidable airplane. Here it is after I, I clear-coated it in flat clear coat. And it kind of uh, um, gl uh, glazed over the, the canopy glass, which I was unhappy with. But I was happy with the rest of it. I think it, it turns out looking kind of, kind of cool. Um, so I, I, you know, I photographed it from a bunch of different angles, and I, I did, I did build it with the uh, the landing gear uh, doors closed because I wanted to, you know, kind of hang it and make it, you know, be be in, in flight. So you know, this is the finished product, and from different angles, and just trying to make it look as as cool as possible. And she's all done, and weathered up, and clear coated. And I, I'm happy with it. And I actually got the center of gravity pretty right because when I hung it up, it, uh, it, it, it dangles well, pretty level. Man, I took a lot of pictures of it. Yeah, so here it is hanging in the, uh, the Johnson Museum of Aerospace, a.k.a. the shelf that I put all the die cast cars that I fix on. Um... I like it. It's good. The canopy, I wish it wasn't so, um, what do you call it, hazy, but it's otherwise it's good. Thanks for watching.